Good morning, scholars. Today we're going to begin our exposition of Book 2 of the Iliad, looking at lines 1 through 15. Here, Zeus sends the destructive dream to Agamemnon. Now, the transition between Book 1 and 2 is one of the most elegant, I think, of the poem. And to appreciate that, we need to look back at the ending of Book 1. So just as they do in most HBO specials, our previous episode, looking back, we'll look at those final lines. Aota epe katedu lampron pa os he elioyo. Hoi men kakeon te seban, woi konde wekastos. Heiki wekastoi doma. Peri clutos ambiguous, hepaistos poiesen, we dui e se pra pedese. Zeus de pros hondacos eie, olympios asteropetes, in taparos coimat hotemen, glucus hupnos hicanoi. In ta catiud anabas, para de crusothronos he re. So we saw at this ending of book one how the sun goes down on Olympus and all the gods depart to their various individual residences and to end the hostilities, the domestic hostilities between Zeus and Hera we see Zeus climbing into bed and Hera beside him and them going to sleep like couples do. Now, what we don't see is, as I said earlier, we don't see uh, Hera actually soothing Zeus with malakoisi uh, repese, with soothing words. But we can be assured that that happened it's just something that Zeus, that the poet does not feel the need to show. He's told you that's going to happen in Hephaestus' speech. So there's no reason to doubt that will, that did happen, and that they did not go to sleep angry. However, we will see that um, Zeus is not altogether an honest dealer, or I should say, I shouldn't say that, because he's just going to do what he's going to do, and he's already made that plain to Hera. But nevertheless, we have book one ending with this sleep across Olympus. Everyone in bed, and the day has ended. So, how does book two begin? Aloi menra de oi tekai aneres hippokorustai, hu don panu kioi, dia du keke ne du mas hupnos. Ala ho ge me meris de katafrena, hos akile a dime se, o se de pole as epe neusen a kayon. So we see that though all the gods and men de oi tekai aneres hippo kurastai hudon panukioi. They sleep through the night. Dia duke eke ne dumas hupnos. Zeus, however, does not sleep through the night, but thinks of how he shall um, do what he's promised Hera, uh, what he's promised Thetis he will do for Achilles. So the passage continues. He de hoi kata dumon ariste baneto bule. Pimp sai ep a tre e de agamem noni u lononeron. Kaimen bone sas, wepea de ruenta proseuda. Bask ite ule onere. Do as epenea sakaion. El don es clisien. Agamem nonos atreidao. 
Banda mal a tweke os, ago e u emen hosepete lo. Dorik sai hekelu e, kare como onta sakaius. Pan sudie, nun ga kene loi balin eru aguiantro on, uga et ampis. Olympia domate conte satana doi, fras don tai. E pe napsen gahapantas, he re li somene. Tro esse de ke de e pape dai. So, this, the analysis of the grammar and presentation of the vocabulary is reserved for my Patreon followers. And if you'd like to continue to grow your Greek through the analysis of these passages, please do consult the link in the description and become a Patreon financial supporter of this effort. It's a mere $4 a month minimum to do so, although I do appreciate my more generous supporters very much. Okay. Aloy men ra de oi de kai ane reis hupokuro stai. Hu don panuki oi. Dia du keke ne du mas hupnos. Ala ho ke me me res de katefrena. Ho sakile ya dime se, o lesse de poleas, epineusen a kayon. He de de hoi katatu mon, aristain paineta bule. Pim sai dep atre ide, agamem noni ulononeron. Kai men pone sas. Wepea de roenta proseuda. Pas iti ule onere, do as epinea sakaion. El ton es clisien, agamem nonos atre idao. Panta mal atre ke os, ago e uemen hos epete lo. Do reik sai. Hekelu e kare como onta sakaius. Pan sudie, nun ga ke eloi, polen eru agri anto on. Uga et ampis, olympia domate contas, atanatoi frasdontai. Epe nam senga hapantas. He re li sa me ne. Tho e se de ke de e peip dai. So there we have it. And here is a marvelous woodcutting of the dream appearing to Agamemnon. And, uh, you know, I'm not an, not an art historian, so I'm not going to attempt to uh, explicate the iconography, but no doubt this is a marvelous uh, early modern woodcut of this uh, happening. And you seem to have the two figures, you know, not just, I guess, it's very interesting. I guess it's, is the figure that's reclining Zeus and then the kind of sinister thing with the wings, is that the, uh, is that the actual uh, dream? I'm not sure what's going on here, but obviously the bigger figure has to be Agamemnon himself. Okay, whatever. I will see you again soon. I hope you enjoyed the beginning of book two. You'll see that because of our gains of book one, we're able to move at a much better pace now. So continue to work hard and enjoy as we go forward with our treatment of the Iliad. Bye-bye. Have a good day.